let's do the front. So same routine, measurements, tire pressure, and camper angle on the ground, and then after the car is jacked up. Tire pressure, camper angles for both on the ground and up for the front. Like I said last time, these are not exact numbers, just reference points to go with. I just spray some uh, PB blaster to these uh, hex nuts here and we'll come back to it. Got my battery tender hooked up so I can listen to music while I work on the car. This is the speed sensor line. There's a bracket here I need to take off first. Then the brake line bracket, I need to take that off. So top and bottom, doing both sides. Outside tie rod ends, I need to take that off. Okay, I already loosened up the right side. Now I'm on the left side of the upper bolt of the strut, the stock strut. So these are 19 mil socket. So I got my long breaker bar here. So I gotta put a camera down because I'm by myself again. So this speed line, I mean, so this uh, brake line bracket, this bolt just doesn't want to move. And I strip a little bit of it on top, so I don't want to do that anymore. Uh, normally I would go to the fire route, but since I'm so damn close to the brake line, I'm kind of hesitant to do that right now. And also I spray some PB blaster on top of it. I don't know if they're flammable, so let me try that away from here. Let's just see if that, uh, if that PB blaster will catch on fire. All right, it doesn't. It just smokes and it evaporates, so that's good. All right, so I just blasted the bolt here for two seconds and I did about three bursts. It still wouldn't budge, so I just spray down again with PB Blaster, so I'm gonna go work on something else and let this sit and come back to it. I really don't wanna have to fire it going more than three seconds. It's so damn close to the brake line, so. Okay, so I got everything loose, basically, kind of. The top bolt's loose, the bottom one's loose as well. The bolt that holds the brake line's loose, and the speed sensor line bracket's also loose. Castle nuts also loose, but I ran into a little problem on both sides. The OEM strut that holds three hex nuts, right here, this one, that one, and this one. Two of the three are loose, except for this one on both sides, they're rusted. So I gotta figure something out. So quick update, I was able to get to this uh, hex nut out by removing, take the whole crossbar up. <laughs> Um, so I could get a really good socket in there. Um, so this is uh, off. The other two hex nuts are on because I don't want to take them all out. Uh, I need to lower the OEM strike in a controlled fashion so I don't want to lose them up yet. I mean take them off yet. They are loose. I'm trying to get this castle nut off but the cotter pin uh, on the back side you probably can tell it's like it's not straight. So I cannot pull it from this side to come back out. So what I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm gonna get a Dremel to just cut this in half. This is what's left of the cotter pin. So I use a Dremel. So that's gone. So now I can uh, get this castle nut off. So uh, let me do this on both sides. All right, the other side came out actually a lot more easier. <laughs> I just pulled it and it came right out. All right, since I have the crossbar, I might as well clean it. So there's some minor surface rust I mean, for 17 years, this is not bad at all. It's just mostly on the on the end, so they're not that bad at all. So I'm just gonna use the same rust dissolver and then paint some um, rust protective spray paint on top. Okay, wire brush, two of them, O2 brush, uh, scrub thingy. Get this cleaned up. Got my soap. So just like the rear suspension, I use this stuff and I just apply a bunch of that. And we're gonna clean that up, then we're gonna flip it over and do the same thing. Then we'll let it dry and spray paint it. I'm in the backyard away from everything, about to spray this down. I'm gonna try to clean this area up. So, got some wire brush. And, cause this area looks like crap. Okay, so I clean up the area on both sides. So it's 
a lot cleaner now. I'm gonna clean more once I get rid of these two hex nuts that's still holding the uh, struts in place. But you see these um, little tiny bubble stuff? That's usually a sign of rust. I hope this is just on the top side and not rust that is penetrating from underneath. So, hmm. Okay, now that the cotter pen is out of the way, so I'm gonna go work on this uh, outer tie rod um, and take that uh, castle nut off. That's a 19 millimeter. We have a new one. I got the puller. I'm about to set this up and line this up with the bottom of this uh, uh, bolt. Got my socket. I'm gonna turn it. And I got my safety glasses. Just wear them. You never know what's gonna pop out. Shouldn't be anything, but it's uh, it's always good to be safe, just in case. Okay, so I turn my steering wheel all the way to the left. I'm on the right side, so this comes out a little bit more, so it's easier to work on. I would have more room. So to get this off, I need to spin this and uh, take this out. Let's just hope this locking locking nut and the tie rod and they're not stuck together. I looks like they are. It's been so long. I was able to get this loose by using a crescent wrench. I kind of stuck it on here and then I kind of pounded it with a rubber mallet. And uh, so now it's loose. Since I'm replacing the part with OEM stuff, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count how many turns of the tie rod end when it comes out so I know how many turns it goes back in. Um, I'm also replacing this nut as well. I'm looking from the top of the engine bay I counted about three threads are still exposed. So I'm going to take a picture of it. Tie rod end that came out looks all old and worn out. And this actually took 13 full turns for this to come out. The locking nut is pulled out. And here's the old one and new one. They look the same to me. And they have the same thickness. They feel the same. So I should be okay. And I'm going to go clean up the threads here before I put the new one on. Update, all stuff's out, tie rod ends, locking nuts, and castle nuts. And the new one's on, on both sides. And I'm just gonna let this hang, and we'll come back and we take this whole strut thing out. Okay, that was, uh, that was a bitch to get this out. So Owen's out, and as I was saying earlier, that I hope this was not rusting through it is not these are just uh service rust you probably can't tell on camera but i'm just gonna clean this up and and uh spray paint it with uh the any rust paint like i did to the back let me uh go work on this i gotta get off the other side i'm still on the right side so two things i want to show you guys we're back on the right side of the car the new coil over it is in on the right I have two new flange bolts and nuts. They're not torqued down yet. Nothing is torqued down, they're just in. And I will do that later. Um, the tie rod end on the right side, I put 13 turns back in and the locking nut is up against it. Now, I have the floor jack at the bottom that is kind of holding this whole apparatus up so I can come up here. These three are not torqued down at all so i will torque everything down little by little so i'm going to do this carefully and do it right the second thing i want to show you is this this is the left coil over is not in yet but when i was test fitting this the new with the new um flange bolt the top goes in no problem the bottom it just wouldn't go through like it, it was by a hair when i say by hair it was by a hair so i had to go get a dremel tool just kind of put this in here and just wiggle around it for like about 10 seconds. I don't think they made a mistake when they were manufacturing this thing. I think it was the paint surface. Uh, if you look closer, I, I basically stripped the paint off. So now it's just a, a, a silver. You can see the steel. So now it would fit. So now I'm gonna put back ABS and brake line onto the strut tower. New flange bolts, 12 millimeter and 10 millimeter. All right, for torque. So the top, they want 33 foot pound torque. The two bolts that go into the struts, the top one's 101, bottom is 116. Then the castle nut is 40. 
The three nuts are torqued down to 34. I went one over, whatever. Top and bottom bolts are torqued down to 102 to 118, so I went one and two over. No big deal. Now I gotta work on this guy. But before I do that, I have a little problem here. The speed sensor line, the hole here, the bracket, the hole, um, it's up here. They don't come up, they don't line up. If I'm trying to pull it, I'm stretching the cable. So I think they messed it up when they were made this part, but um, it's no big deal. I'll figure something out. Maybe I'll get some zip ties or something. I just don't want them to be flapping around and stuff. So we're on the left side of the outer tie rod ends. Long story short, the aftermarket hole for the tie rod end to go into, they're a little bit smaller than OEM. So I had to drum a little bit to get this in there all the way through for the nut to fit and I gotta torque it down tomorrow. I gotta also put some grease around it. When I did the right side, I didn't know the hole was too small. So I was kind of forcing this in and it was too tight. So long story short anyway, uh, when I did the left, I found that out. So when I was trying to get this guy back out, I kind of burst grease inside the boot. So this is kind of done. You see all that uh, yellowish uh, grease I probably have to go get a new one just one so it's gonna be a slight delay this is what I wind up doing on the right side for the ABS speed sensor line I put a bunch of zip ties I try turning the wheels and stuff and the lines not rubbing on anything since I screw up that one tie rod and I, I can't do anything yet until I get a new one so I just put the wheels back on just want to see where my ride height would be I think it will be too high and I'm gonna have to make new adjustments. As I expected, this is all screwed up and way too high. Um, even though the new coilovers are an inch shorter than the stock ones, these new ones, they have higher spring rates. So that means it takes more weight to compress the same distance. So this is the right side. I'm riding an SUV right now. so. The left is the same, so I'm gonna have to lower this by at least three inches. At least three inches, I think. So I'm gonna jack the car back up, take the wheels off, and make adjustments. So I'm looking from the front, camper angle is messed up, Lime, alignment is messed up, so everything is messed up. So let me adjust the ride height and then uh, put the, when I get the new tie rod ends on, then we'll go from there and make adjustments. Okay, I got my spanner wrenches here. I was gonna make ride height adjustment, but now it's starting to rain and it's gonna rain for the next two, three days off and on and I have to be at work. So aside from the tie rod setback, uh, this is gonna be a slight delay.